Hello, and welcome to our 2021 Belfry Carol service. We had hoped to be meeting in person again this year, but recent events have made it not viable to do so. We're hoping for better things next year. But our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whether we're meeting in person or watching a video presentation or hearing this on the radio, and we're still celebrating Emmanuel, God with us, who came in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, to bring us hope, whether we're restricted by our circumstances or not. So let's focus on him as we sing carols and hear his word being read and hear words of faith and encouragement. Christmas truly is a time for celebration and hope because Jesus came to earth as a baby and set his face towards the cross giving up his life so that all who turn to him would find eternal life in him. What greater hope could there be? And what a reason to celebrate him this Christmas. Let's pray together as we begin. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your presence with us as we join in this celebration of your birth. Please help us to meet with you as we celebrate together and to know your peace over this Christmas time. Amen.
Hello, I'm Andy Nash. I'm manager of the Belfry Shopping Centre in Redhill. I'm also chair of Redhill's Business Guild. Well, a year ago, I recorded a message very similar to this and obviously had hoped this year to welcome everybody back into the Belfry so we could sing carols together. Unfortunately, retrospective COVID measures have meant that we can't sing carols through a mask. So instead, I'm wishing you all a happy Christmas in your front rooms. So this year, it's all the Belfry's 30th anniversary. <sighs> Opened in 1991 by Joanna Lomley. Um, it's also my 10th year in charge of the Belfry. And I continue to be incredibly proud of my team who keep doing all we can to keep Belfry vibrant, safe and welcoming for all of our visitors. And whilst I'm delighted the shopper numbers do continue to increase and return slowly, we certainly do need everybody to support local and support our local shops after most of them were forcibly closed for 40% of the last 20 months. That's 34 of the last 85 weeks spent in lockdowns. And whilst we're not out of this terrible pandemic, the vaccine does give and some realistic hope and optimism at last. And we're actually currently finalising with the NHS to have our very own vaccination centre, hopefully opening within the Belfry very soon. Santa's back seeing children in his grotto, the Panto's back at the Harlequin, and our beautiful Christmas decorations are again bringing some sparkle and joy to Red Hill. The generous food bank donations have continued since day one of the very first lockdown, and we're delighted to be able to hold our annual Armistice Day service of remembrance again this year. After the incredible generosity of our shoppers raised over £18,500 for the poppy appeal. Amazing figures. So onwards into 2022 and whatever it may bring, including the new Marketfield Way development over the road, which we're very excited about. My Christmas wish remains simple, that everyone does continue to support local, to support each other, to stay safe, and do have a really happy Christmas. Thank you. The first Noel, the angel did say, was to Bethlehem shepherds in fields as they lay in fields where they lay keeping their sheep on a cold winter's night that was so deep no
The readings are taken from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 49, and Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. And Mary says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. In those days Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger because there was no guest room available for them.
reading is from Luke chapter 2 verses 8 to 20. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing all the plains, and the mountains in
Well, welcome everyone inside St Matthew's Church. I'm Father Andrew, uh, the vicar here, and I've probably seen many of you uh, uh, around from time to time. Um, it's lovely to be able to share a prayer time with you as part of this recorded Belfry carol service here in St Matthew's, where we're gearing up for Christmas celebrations alongside being busy with our food bank work and outreach into the community too. So our prayers. So now our prayers of intercession and the response after every petition is come and live with us soon. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and live with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting because we know who you are the creator of the world, the God who took on human form, the son of Mary, a girl just like any other girl, but so special and chosen. We are waiting, Jesus, come, come and, and live, live with, with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting because we have faith in you, we know that we can trust you. We remember that you are good to us and we thank you for all the good things that you give to us every day. We are waiting, Jesus. Come, Come and, and live, live with, with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting here, here in Red Hill, here in Rygate, here in our communities locally. We wait for you to come into our houses, our streets, our shops and offices, to fill them with your light and peace. We are waiting, Jesus. Come and live with us soon. Jesus, we are waiting for you to come and change things, to bring health to our sick ones, to make our asylum seekers welcome, to strengthen those whose work is difficult and challenging, especially at this time, to comfort those who have lost loved ones and to turn us round so that we can be your hands and feet, your ears and eyes in this world that needs you so much. We are waiting, Jesus. Come, Come and, and live, live with, with us soon. Amen. And a blessing prayer. May Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. Blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and those whom you love, this day and always. Amen. Amen.
from 1 John chapter 4 verses 7 to 14. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he is in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Saviour of the world. Hello, my name is Mark Hope and I'm from Christ Central in Red Hill. I want to start by showing you something that I was given in the late 80s, or as my kids would say, the olden days, uh, by my boss. When I was given this, I thought it was amazing. I loved having this phone because as a young man, I thought I had something that many other people didn't have. And I used to like driving around in my company car using my phone, which at the time you were allowed to do. I wonder, do you ever look at things that other people have and wish you had that for yourself? Maybe at this time of the year, you or people you know get envious of the gifts that other people are given. It may not even be during this festive period. It could be that you just look around and you think, oh, I wish I had that, or I wish I owned something that was a bit better than the thing that I've got. I wonder 
if you have children or have heard children say things like, it's just not fair. I wanted to have a, a pony for Christmas, but all I got was a hamster. And I can't ride on my hamster. The problem is it doesn't take long before other people have the things that you've got. And with phones, you know, people end up with the same phones and they're no longer quite as cool or quite as trendy as the one that you thought you had that other people don't have. And the thing with things like phones is in the end, they break, they wear out and they're no good. And all stuff we have can be a bit like that, can't it? We, we all want to have things that are bigger and better and sometimes we want to have the things that our neighbours and our friends have. But for some people, there are things that they'll never have. And the reality is, for most of us watching this, we're in probably the, the top percentage of people in the world. Now, you might not think that, but actually the fact that we have roofs over our head, we have running water, we don't tend to go days and days without food. We have plenty of stuff. But here's the problem. No matter how much stuff you have, eventually things break. They wear out, they stop working. And at some point, these things will let you down. But as you've been hearing today, as you've heard in some of the readings, and you've been uh, hopefully singing along to some of the carols, there's something that Christians believe is a gift that's better than any other gift you're ever likely to receive. And this is a gift that money can't buy, and it's the greatest gift that is available to any human being. It's a gift that will never run out, it will never break, it won't get out of date. It's a gift which Christians don't just celebrate at Christmas time, this is a gift that we celebrate all year round. And that gift is the gift of Jesus. Now some of you might just imagine Jesus as a baby, but Jesus grew into a boy and he grew into a man and he had a lot, a lot to say about himself and why he was so special. In one conversation Jesus had with a man called Philip, he said, Who has, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, and he was ref referring to his Father in heaven, God. He also said the best way you can live your life was to follow him and do the things that he did, and the things that he taught. He also said that he was the light of the world. And here's an amazing thing. If you want to know what God is like, all you have to do is look at Jesus and look at what he says about himself and the things that he taught and the things that he did, which we can read in the Bible. And when we do this, life starts to make sense. Because when you look at Jesus, you realize what a special gift he is to us. And the fact that Jesus is free and we don't have to pay to know Jesus, it means that all people, whether you're rich, whether you're poor, from any background, any country, any political persuasion, whether you're in Europe or not in Europe, whether you're vaccinated or not vaccinated, no one is left out because God wants everyone to know him. And through Jesus, we can know God. So the next time you get a gift, and maybe in, in this Christmas time you'll be receiving gifts, remember that there's one gift that has been given to us by God. And this gift, as I've said, will never break. In fact, this gift lasts for all eternity. And this gift is life in Jesus. And all we have to do is receive this gift and take it and accept it, and then all that comes from our loving Father will be yours. You will know through Jesus that your life has meaning, that your life has purpose. You'll know that you are loved by God. The Bible says that Jesus came to seek and save the lost. Jesus also said that he, that 
he would have life or we could have life in all its fullness through knowing him. There are many answers to some of the big questions that people ask in life that can be found in knowing Jesus. He gives us the answer to life. And perhaps you're listening to what I'm saying and you want to know more. Or perhaps more so this year than ever, you might be feeling lost. You might be feeling that you just want to know a bit more about what life is all about. Maybe you want to experience this life in all its fullness that Jesus offers us. And I pray that this Christmas, you and your family and friends would take a moment to think about and reflect on Jesus and what he has given to us all. And if this is news to you, if this is something you want to know more about and you want to discover for yourself what Jesus can really mean for you and why he came to the earth with this incredible message of life, then there are many churches in this area that would love to welcome you and would love to get to know you and love to talk to you more about Jesus. So I just want to say a Merry Christmas to you. May God bless you this Christmas time and may this year be a happy and peaceful new year.
This year we have chosen two charities, the YMCA East Surrey and Sparkfish, to be beneficiaries of the offering to be taken at Carols in the Belfry. Unfortunately, as we can't be together, we can't take that offering, but we wanted to give the organisations an opportunity to tell you about their work and then, if you would like to, you can go online and donate directly to those charities. So here is Reverend David Skitt, Chaplain of YMCA East Surrey, followed by Lindsay Hardwick, the Learn Coordinator for Sparkfish. Football mad Rob goes round to see his girlfriend Sharma, who fears that Rob is cooling. He explains himself, I just worried that you were not passionate enough about Chelsea. Well, the birth of Jesus demonstrates how passionate God is about people. The YMCA shares that passion, especially for the vulnerable and the homeless from all backgrounds, both local and also asylum-seeking children and young people. The help we give is for all, whatever the age, gender, belief system or not. We share God's passion for folks' emotional and physical well-being, ranging from the mental health of young people to providing help for more senior people recovering from significant health problems. We support families across a spectrum of needs, supporting, amongst others, families who have someone with a disability. My role as chaplain is to be available to our staff and participants to support them under pressure on the multi-faith basis. It is also, along with a team of others, to offer to come to churches and faith communities and to talk in more detail about our work. So please invite us. There is loads I have left out, but if you are asking what can I do to support the work of the YMCA, well, of course, we always accept gladly donations, but you can also follow us and message us on our social media channel, YMCA East Surrey. Or you can take part in our challenges to raise money, from fun runs to quizzes to sponsored events. The next one being the Sleep Easy event on the 11th of March 2022, where we are sleeping out at Rygate Town Hall. Maybe your church could even offer premises for some of our youth events, or you could volunteer suitably vetted for our play schemes. Please become involved. You know, Trigger in one of the episodes of Fools and Horses is visiting Del and Rodney and he is listening to a CD Rodney's playing and it's some lovely music. So Trigger says, what? Well, that's music that is. And Rodney explains that it's Mozart Symphony Number no. 38 in D major. Ah, oh, no singing then, says Trigger. No. Dell then comes in and asks the same question about the music. To his amazement, it's Trigger who answers. Oh, that's Mozart Symphony No. 38 in D major, Dell. And then as Dell looks at him in an amazed pause, he goes on to say, it's the karaoke version. I think Jesus would have liked Trigger. You see, on hearing something good, he wanted to join in. God joined in following up his passion for people by coming to us in Jesus. We can join in, karaoke fashion if you like, we can join in with his refrain and help many people who are vulnerable or on the edge in many ways through the YMCA. Hello, uh, my name's Lindsay Hardwick and I work for an organisation called Sparkfish. We're a local collaborative Christian organisation that aims to inspire young people in faith, hope and love. We work with young people in schools across Rygate, Red Hill and Merston, and we offer support in important areas of the curriculum and in school life. So in Sparkfish we work in partnership with local churches as we aim to support young people in all aspects of their lives. We work across all ages in education, and from reception classes right up to sixth form students. And we aim to bridge gaps and build confidence, and to help young people grow, both emotionally and spiritually. 
We also share our experience and resources to support partners working in schools outside our local area. But in Sparkfish we have three main areas of work, learn, think and hope. So our Learn Strand is all about supporting schools with their RE curriculum and developing events that bring the Bible to life. And we also lead assemblies, both in person and online, that explore Christian values. We have two large RE events each year. Our Christmas Journey for Year 2 students and our Easter Experience production for School Year 5. So after 18 months of developing resources online, we were delighted to be back for a live performance of our Christmas Journey event this year where we welcome 26 Year 2 classes from 13 different schools to explore the Christmas story and find out why it's so important for Christians. And we're really looking forward to preparing for our Easter Experience production, which we've planned to go ahead in March 2022. This is a dramatic presentation of the events of Holy Week, with opportunities for the, the students to ask questions afterwards. And at Sparkfish, we're always developing new areas of work, and this academic year, we have completed some training and we're going to be leading Walk Through the Bible Old Testament RE lessons in spring 2022, which we're really looking forward to starting. So now Think Strand focuses on providing space and time in a really busy school day for children from both primary and secondary schools to have the opportunity for reflection and wonder, hopes and prayers. Sparkfish helps schools to provide space in their curriculum for spiritual development. The school sets a room aside for several days and the Sparkfish team converts it into a think space, which is a special space for students to reflect, to wonder, ponder and, if they wish, to pray. So Think draws on Christian traditions of reflection and prayer in a really open and inclusive way. We set up our think spaces with activities to engage minds and hearts with questions that there usually isn't time to ask about life's origins and meanings, about human values and relationships. So students of all ages enjoy the quiet space and time to explore different themes and different values. We work in partnership with local churches and volunteers to support and develop our think spaces. And it's been great to start with two think spaces in the autumn term and we have a busy programme of think spaces booked in later this academic year. So our third area of work is our hope strand. Sparkfish supports students through times of challenge and change through our hope stream activities. So we seek to walk alongside young people, especially at times when they're more vulnerable in the circumstances of life. We run workshops for young people in Year 6 to help support them in their transition from primary school to secondary school. And we also run lunchtime, lunchtime drop-in groups in secondary schools. We also currently provide support for young people through mentoring in secondary schools, small group activities, and we also lead drawing and talking sessions for students in primary schools. But at Sparkfish, we couldn't continue to develop our work without the support of local churches and our team of volunteers. If you'd like to support the work of Sparkfish through praying for us, volunteering with us, or supporting us financially, please do go to our website for further information. Thank you, and we at Sparkfish would like to wish you all a very happy Christmas. If you would like to give to either the YMCA or Sparkfish, then please go to their website at ymcaeastsurrey.org.uk and sparkfish.org.uk and you can click donate.
So we have come to the end of this year's Belfry Carol Service. As we finish, let me pray these words of encouragement from the Apostle Paul. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Do give generously to our chosen charities this year, Red Hill YMCA and Sparkfish. You'll find details at the end of this video. God bless you all this Christmas.